Taylor, we're all lined up to go. Napoleon has a plan. He remembers. At Austerlitz, he won because he delivered one sharp blow at the critical moment. In an attempt to reprise that success, he has the Grand Battery lined up here. He's going to shell this point. He's got here a second corps under Riley. Here's the first corps under Durlan. <clears throat> They're going to drive through and break the British line. He has all the cavalry here. If anyone here turns and moves over this way, they're going to be broadsided by cavalry. The guard is back here. Let's see how this plays out. Around noon, Bulow's 4th Corps appears. But the Prussians are so stretched out, it'll be late afternoon before they actually become a threat. Nevertheless, they will weigh heavily on the French mind. Napoleon's Grand Battery fires. But the soft ground and reverse slopes severely limit the artillery's effectiveness. Durlan lunges forward west of Hiromal. Jerome Bonaparte, Riley's corps, lunges forward. Durlan's assault. The British line is forced back. Jerome Bonaparte's assault. The area is left to be contested with no one in control. Blucher's Hussars race ahead as fast as they can, while the rest of 4th Corps tries to keep up. Riley's 2nd Corps surges forward as his Hussars charge Proponker's retreating men. The British stiffen the line. Uxbridge reinforces Proponker's men. Meanwhile, some French cavalry warily advance. Elements Cuirassiers move south to reinforce the drive. Elements in Napoleon's guard occupy Hugomont. Lobau is ordered to investigate the rumor of Prussians. Durland's men continue the assault. It's early afternoon and Zeton and Blucher arrive. Their dragoons race forward to announce their arrival. Propunker's men fall back. Combat begins with Durlan's continued assault. The British are driven back. The cavalry battle. French Hussars versus British dragoons. Hussars want none of that. They back off. And more. Prussians arrive. Kellerman's cuirassiers charge the British dragoons. The dragoons are eliminated. Pilate's lancers charge Proponker's men. He sends Foy's division to clear the troops out of Brown Lalu. The British line begins to collapse under the accelerated French assault. Bulow's 4th Corps begins to deploy on the French east flank. Durland's drive will not relent. He deploys bags to keep the troops fresh. The British do what they can to hold their line together. Lobau creates a line on the French right to oppose the Prussians. Napoleon begins advancing the guard to administer the final blow. It's late afternoon, and finally, the Prussians are beginning to make their presence felt. The French feel their threat. The British attempt to cling stubbornly, along with the British right hold out. The British have denied control of the area to the French, but at a terrible price. Tragically, the line beside them disintegrates. In the town. The detachments are driven out. It is now dinner time. Perch's second corps of Prussians is finally present as they come out of line. Wellington scrambles to fall back and reform his line. As the Prussians continue to fall out into line, Napoleon realizes he must finish the British army off soon. And Lobau on the French right realizes the Prussians are getting ready to launch their assault. 
Uxbridge readies his heavy cavalry. Riot's Corps advances slowly, reorganizing. The British begin tightening their line, giving the Prussians room to fill it in. Durlan's Corps pauses to recover. Kellerman's Corps prepares for the final assault. Napoleon brings forward the guard. Around dinner time, both sides seem to take a collective rest and there's no heavy action being fought. The quiet is broken. Kellerman's cuirassiers charge the British line. The cuirassiers destroy the artillery, but the household guard drives them back. And in the decisive blow, the cuirassiers overrun another British position. The British have lost over 50% casualties, and they rout. Napoleon has won Waterloo. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.